Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand independent comics, getting into an interesting article about DC Comics owner Warner Brothers Discovery. They have massive layoffs incoming, and that's not just from me. That's coming from Breitbart. That's coming from Deadline. It's all over the media, and actually, this has something to do with when they merged Warner Brothers with the Discovery Network. So let's get into the article. Let's talk about what's going on, who's going to get the layoffs, before we do, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the bell for notifications. All right, let's get into it. So this is coming from Breitbart, as we said. Report, mass layoffs coming this month to CNN parent company Warner Brothers Discovery. Mass layoffs are reportedly in the works at Warner Brothers Discovery, the new parent company of the far left CNN, with Discovery executives seeking to slash headcount as early as next week. Now, this isn't like the biggest surprise in the world because when Discovery announced that they were merging with Warner Brothers, they did actually announce, this is in Hollywood Reporter, but this was all over the place, that they expected to save $3 billion when they combine the two companies in, quote, cost savings. Cost savings, I mean, it's layoffs. You know, you combine the companies, you cut out this, you cut out that, people got to go. Uh, and that's how they're going to make money. And what's interesting, too, about uh, Warner Brothers uh, Discovery is a major shareholder is John Malone, who is this legend in the cable industry. He did deal after business deal after business deal after business deal. And um, the guy's brilliant, okay? I just, I just have to say. And in any case, they're going to get their $3 billion, uh, out of this company no matter what um, because uh, that's what they want. There will be layoffs. Okay, now, in the article, August had long been rumored to mark the start of the mass layoffs, with the first wave expected as early as next week, as the honeymoon period for the recently merged media empire draws to an end, according to a report from Deadline. By the way, you'll note, this was before the, whatever, recession, not recession. Tell me in the comments below if you think we're in a recession. I kind of do. Um... But this was before all of that. This was also before this $3 billion worth of cost savings, layoffs, stuff like that. Also before uh, Netflix completely fell apart. The, the streaming industry like took a huge, huge downturn. Uh, and now they're facing this. So things have changed a lot, even for when they said they were going to cut $3 billion. Maybe they're going to be looking to cut $4 billion. I mean, these are, these are aggressive business guys. They will do what they need to do. Thousands of workers are reportedly expected to be impacted by the layoffs, which are expected to stretch through Thanksgiving. Uh, when layoffs start like this, they start them, they keep them going, and they kind of see what the backlash is outside the company and inside the company. If they can continue, they will continue this, I'm telling you, through easily June. It is going to be a lot of people getting let go. The protracted period of pain comes as CEO David Zaslov cleans house amid a pledge to find at least the $3 billion in savings. At least. See that? At least. By the way, when they say things like this, the $3 billion, they're telling banks that, right? They're telling financial interests that. They're telling stockholders that. They don't say that kind of stuff and then not follow through. And the reason why not is because they need credibility with those people because if they don't have credibility with those people, the business could have tremendous, tremendous problems raising money. And at the very least, it costs them more money to operate. It becomes very difficult for them. And then executives don't make as much money. They don't like that either. One of Zaslov's first moves upon taking power this year was to shut down CNN Plus, the highly touted but little watched brainchild of CNN's Jeff Zucker, who was also kicked out. Uh, who was asked of his position uh, this year amid low ratings and a sex scandal. It, it was, it, 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 yeah, he's out. CNN Plus was shut down after just a month of operation. So they, they had spent something like $300 million trying to launch CNN Plus. And, and, you know, the problem with it being, of course, it's another separate streaming channel. The problem with it is it, who wants that? You know, who's going to pay for that? It was a premium uh, pay service. And it's not like the people on CNN are such incredible uh, celebrities that people want to see more from them. Um, so it, it was really just like a vanity project and um, they got away with it, And but not when Zaslav came on there. 
It was a major embarrassment for the cable news network that positioned itself as seriously as anti-Trump, uh, an anti-Trump outlet under the Zucker regime. Warner Brothers Discovery also canceled the TBS show Full Frontal with Samantha Bee, who basically, her main thing was um, being anti-Trump and um, telling her viewers to harass Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito. The shakeup has already begun in earnest at the Warner Brothers studio, with Toby Emmerich recently leaving as head of the motion picture studio. Warner Brothers executive and film division chief operating officer Carolyn Blackwood also departed. Earlier this year, Warner Media Studios and Network Group Chairman CEO Ann Sarnoff left the company. Hmm. Ann Sarnoff was there a long time. Deadline reported that the big changes could also come to HBO Max streaming service. One possibility sees HBO Max being folded into a combined entity along with Discovery+. Plus. The streamer could also see a drastic cutback in its programming. Now, what I will tell you is uh, David Zaslav and his team... They are brilliant, brilliant business operators. Um, Discovery Plus is in as many countries, if not more, than Netflix. And because their content on Discovery Plus, you know, it's nature shows, um, cooking. They have some romance shows and things like that. Um, But they have a lot of stuff that you can just make minor changes to the language. Um, They have uh, also like local hosts, like a local celebrity insert themselves as a host in Italy, let's say, who's pop, very popular in Italy um, with like different animal shows and stuff like that. But they could do it with somebody different in Poland but have the same animal show content. So they're very good at doing that, repurposing content. They also have some really innovative um, distribution uh, through cable networks. And I don't know if you know this or not, but a lot of cable networks will directly distribute uh, Netflix. They, they're doing it uh, with Discovery+. Plus. They're doing it with streaming channels where when they say like, well, we have 3 million uh, viewers in the UK or, or subscribers in the UK, some of those subscribers aren't necessarily direct to the consumer. Some of those are through a cable network that makes a fee on top of that. But um, Discovery has you know other assets. They have their own um, very interesting uh, and successful legit news network in Poland, completely separate from CNN. They do a lot of, of interesting stuff. Um, just looking at this part of the article where they were talking about how some of these executives are leaving, leaving Warner Brothers, uh, just looking at this article earlier in Hollywood Reporter, you know, one of the things that Zaslov makes a, a point uh, when he's talking about co- uh, cost savings is... Um, here, Zaslov speaking at a J.P. Morgan conference Wednesday, Wednesday morning said that the companies had $6 billion being spent on direct-to-consumer non-content expenses. Non-content, meaning not producing a TV, comics, movies, whatever, not content for resale, uh, just overhead. He said, so there's a lot of overlap there. We're building a product. They're building a product. We're making a product. They're market- marketing a product. They're marketing a product. However, when it comes to Warner Brothers Studio, we are assuming zero synergies. So when he says zero synergies, he's saying, oh, well, we can't just fire people from the studio. We can't have people leaving the content studio. That's, they're far too important. Well, that's fine, but we just saw in the current article uh, that in, in uh, Breitbart's article that, you know, yes, there are movie executives that are leaving uh, Warner Brothers left, right, and center. Is this gonna drastically impact DC Comics? Uh, probably will somewhat. Um, I mean, honestly, I don't know where they're going to get $3 billion from. Uh, they've said that there are some synergies uh, where they, synergies, meaning overlap, extra money they're spending, they don't have to spend. You know, they're, they're big on uh, real estate as well, where they want to look at like, well, we have two headquarters in New York City. We don't need two. Let's just pick one and get rid of the other one. So they'll do that as well. Um, they haven't announced which one. But, but be set for a lot of uh, layoffs and you know, eventually they'll get to DC Comics uh, aggressively and they will make sure that the comics they're publishing at least somewhat represent the brands. You know, I did an interesting uh, video recently, one on um, Shatner, William Shatner attacking woke Star Trek. And one of the things that was interesting about it was, well, first of all, that Shatner said he did not like uh, any of the new Star Trek. He thought it was something that Gene Roddenberry would turn over in his grave over. Um, I had mentioned I like Strange New Worlds. I think it's pretty damn good. Um, I won't watch any of the other ones. They're terrible. 
Um, but to me anyway, tell me what you think of them in the comments below. But um, it, there does seem to be like just watching uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife, there does seem to be this, this thing where they're trying to weave themes and the SJW themes and the new progressive stuff that they're pushing a little bit better into existing brands uh, without destroying the brands altogether. You know, like Ghostbusters Afterlife is actually good and it feels like a Ghostbusters movie. Star Trek um, Strange New Worlds, to me at least, feels like a Star Trek show. You know, it feels like a 60s style, uh, 1960s Star Trek show. Uh, yet, it, it, it's got some of the progressive themes in it, but it's it's not overpowering. It doesn't destroy the brand. Tell me what you think in the comments below if this is gonna eventually change uh, comics, movies, TV at Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, for the better. You know, you think we'll have better stuff? I mean, I, I'm going to be objective and, and optimistic and say maybe. And I hope so. We'll see how it goes. But what that doesn't do is it doesn't make your own great content, which is the only way to know that in the future we'll have great stuff. So focus on making your own stuff. Support uh, publishers uh, like anybody in Comics Gate. Support the Ripaverse. Support everyone working hard to make their own stuff and to make their own stuff great and to do it better and better every time. And I will have a new project coming up soon, a new superhero I've been working on for the last year. I am sure you're going to like it because it's kind of pretty, pretty great. All right. Great uh, to be with you. Make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, and I will see you again soon. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.